But as a Dr. Seuss adaptation, yeah, I know it's a piece of shit. I know it's bad, but I like it. I just like it. There are scenes in this movie that I do, I still laugh at. Like, uh, another scene I really laugh at is when, uh, is when Thing 1 and Thing 2 are destroying the house, and the kids are trying to get them back in the crate, and the cat in the house is just reading the newspaper, he's just reading it, and he, and he looks over to the babysitter who's, like, knocked out, and he's like, if this were my house, I'd be furious. <laughs> I just thought that was funny. Um, so yeah, the cat in the hat, yeah, it's not flawless, but I still like it. Next one. The School of Rock. When this movie came out, I didn't have a clue who Jack Black was, and I didn't listen to Led Zeppelin music, but what drew my attention to this movie was that it was a film about a guy teaching kids who were, who I was the, I was that age when this movie came out. I was their age, like fifth grade, sixth grade, around that age when this came out, teaching them how to play rock music. And my dad, huge Led Zeppelin fan, huge. I didn't get into Zeppelin at that time. I just got into the Beatles at this time, okay? And I liked the Beatles so much that in that year, 2002, 2003, 2004, I wanted to take up an instrument. And before I started taking up guitar lessons, this movie came out, and I went to go see it. My sister and I went to go see this with my dad, and my dad wanted to see it because he was interested, because a, a lot of the rock music that was in this my dad grew up with. So we went to go see it, and, you know, it's still pretty damn good. I mean, Jack Black, this is the movie that practically invented the character Jack Black. He's a character. Jack Black is a character. <laughs> you know, because every time I see... Because now... You know, after, you know, now that I know about Tenacious D and all that stuff, because Tenacious D, Pick a Destiny, came out three years later, it's basically the same thing. I mean, he's he's just himself. Um, you know, it's a really good movie. I keep forgetting it's PG-13. I keep forgetting that because it feels like a kid's movie because it was all about the kids and him teaching them how to play rock music. Um, Richard Linklater, I mean, this is the movie that introduced me to him. I'm a huge Richard Linklater fan. Um... Like, he knows how to direct, he knows how to make, tell good stories. This movie, I mean, this movie encouraged me to want to take up an instrument, because not only did I like the Beatles at this point, but then I started to get, then I wanted to take up lessons, and I took up, up lessons like two months after this movie came out. I started um, playing guitar and learning how to play it. And I really liked, I really, really liked this movie a lot, and a lot of kids... I mean, I, it wouldn't surprise me if I, if I, I don't think I'm alone in that, that this movie influenced me to pick up an instrument, because that's how good the movie was. I mean, like, when you see Jack Black playing with these kids in, in the classroom, and Joan Cusack is the principal, oh my god, I forgot about that, um, when he's, like, playing guitar with them, and they're doing all, and they're, and they're doing these songs, there's a couple of new songs in this movie that I did like, and I, and I wish I had the soundtrack, the sound, I wouldn't mind getting the soundtrack for this movie, um, you know, he just goes off the wall. I mean, it's like, he's like The Who and ACD. I mean, Jack Black just goes nuts when he's like in the zone playing guitar. And the kids are just laughing because he's just a, because he, he's a weird kind of guy, you know, because they, they don't know rock music, these kids. They never heard of it. Um, yeah, Miranda Cosgrove. No one knew who she was yet. Drake and Josh wasn't on TV yet when this came out, so no one knew who she was. She was in, she's in this. Um... You know, it, it's amazing that this movie, for all the rock music they talk about, not one time do they ever mention the Beatles. Maybe they didn't have the money. They couldn't get the money to get Beatles songs in it. I heard they had a tough time just getting the Immigrant song in this movie from Led Zeppelin. They had a tough time just getting that song, so I guess the Beatles was just too much. But they don't even mention it, you know. Um, you know, and they, men they mention all this great music in the movie, like, yes. I mean, how many times do you ever hear... Yes is such an underrated band. I never hear Yes get mentioned. They never get mentioned. It's either Zeppelin, The Who, The Stones, ACDC, Guns N' Roses. Nobody ever talks about Yes. They never talk about that progressive rock band. And that's a band that's been going on, uh, whatever, 40 years now? A little over 40 years? I mean, they're just... Man, they got some great songs. But yeah, School of Rock, big, big movie. Great, great influence on my childhood. Good movie. Next one. Cats. Now, unless you know the musical, you probably didn't grow up with the film version. I can't remember the first time I saw this. Um, it was probably... 
The, the only thing I can dig up from when I first saw this was the following, okay? When I was a kid, and this is like 1997, 98, so I'm like four or five years old here. A movie, I, I, I never really, my, my mom was very strict with what I was to watch. So throughout the 90s, between 90, 95 and 99, I watched nothing but PBS, Nothing but Nickelodeon wasn't allowed. Or I don't. I, she didn't say Nickelodeon wasn't allowed, but she was very strict. Like, like she, she, she thought the Three Stooges was too much for me to watch. Okay, she was very strict about that. So PBS was what I watched a lot. So Barney the Dinosaur, yeah, I watched that, and yes, I did watch the movie Barney's Great Adventure. I don't know if you, if you grew up with Barney in the '90s, you might remember that movie with the egg and everything, and it changes colors. I don't know if any of you guys remember that movie, but. By the way, that mo that movie's crap. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's crap. B big part of my childhood, but that movie is that movie's just so bad. I just can't, I can't watch that movie. I feel sorry for my dad because I had to drag my dad to the movies to go see. That. I've apologized for it. I have because I said, Dad, I can't because I watched that movie recently and I'm like, Oh, Dad, I feel so sorry that you drug me to see that because you were probably so bored. But I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about this movie. Um. When Barney's Great Adventure came on video cassette, okay, there was a trailer for the um, the the, uh, the 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 VHS tape of the Broadway musical Cats at the Winter Garden Theater, which ran there for twenty years. And I remember seeing that preview at the beginning of the VHS of Barney's Great Adventure, and Cats and that preview mesmerized me. And it start, it opens up with the cat eyes, and it's like open your eyes, and and you have a close up of like of Monkstrap, and he's like, and then it experienced the magic, and I was like, I was blown away by that, and and they have the Macavity song playing, and and Dem and, and Demeter, and Demeter and Bumbleina, I think, are like doing the dancing for it, and I was just blown away by it. I was a little four year, I was four years old. I was blown away by that, and I said, oh, I gotta get this, and my dad knew what Cats was, I didn't. And he went out and bought the video, and I watched it. And I was hooked. Hooked on that show. I bought... I bought the soundtrack. I bought the soundtrack, people. I have the movie on video cassette right over there in my VHS collection. I, I, well, I, I bought this years later. I, didn't, I haven't had this for a while. It's still in pretty good condition. This is the, um, this is the 1982 uh, Broadway musical. It's not the people from the movie, so the songs sound a little different. But the thing is, I loved that movie so much that my dad took me to... I don't think he took me to the Winter Garden Theater to see it, because by that point, I think it was done. This was around in, like, 99, 2000. He took me over to Philly to go see it. Um, or maybe he took me to New York to see it. I forget what... I don't know where the theater is. He took me to the Forest Theater. I don't know if that's in New York or Philly. I could be... I know it's one of those cities. So we went to see it, and I was blown away by it there. And I'll, I'll never forget this. At that point, I had seen the movie so many times that I thought, because I was like six or seven years old, I thought that the same actors in the movie were going to be on the stage when I went to go see the show live. And I was so disappointed because I'm, I'm standing there, and I'd seen the movie so many times, and there's a lot of close-ups, so, so y you see their faces in the movie. And I'm like... That's not the same actor that played McCavity. That's not the same actor who was Rum Tum Tugger or Demeter or any of the... That's not the same cast. And I was... That was a downer. But but the movie was great. I love these songs. Every one of these songs, I, I can sing every one of these songs. I love them. Andrew Lloyd Webber is... It, it's a phenomenon, that, that, that show. And... I wish they would bring it back to Broadway. I really wish they could. There's a whole generation out there who has never seen this show. I'm so lucky I got to see it. It was on Broadway for 20 years, and then they took it off. I wish they would bring it back. If it, it, Let me tell you how much I love it, okay? If I ever got a chance to be in a Broadway version of Cats and be one of the Cats, that'd be a dream come true, because I've been out that movie since I was like five in the living room when I was a little kid when I first got the video because the movie it just blew my mind with the choreography with the singing with the music and the lights and that stick that stage that moon that moon is implanted in my head the way the design for it was the 
the the broken down car in the alley that says TSE one because it's based off because the because the musical is based off the T, um the T S Eliot poems. I mean that that's great. I love. For those of you guys who don't know what Cats is, let me explain it to you. This is the best I can explain it, okay? And I never read the po the poetry from T.S. Eliot, I never did, but this is the best I can gather from it, okay? It's about a bunch of alley cats getting together, or maybe, maybe it's not alley cats because they all have collars, but they all get together on this one evening, and old Deuteronomy is like, I guess he's their Jesus or something, I don't know, but he's like the god of the cats, and he has to, and he's going to pick one cat to come back to a different Jellicle life, because they're all Jellicle cats, you know what I mean? And I think that he's going to pick one, and all of the songs are basically each one of the cats describing themselves and who they are, like Skimble Shanks the Railway Cat, um, McCavity the Mystery Cat, which is my, which is by the way my favorite song of that whole show. It's still my favorite one. Um, Rum Tum Tugger, Mr. Mistopheles. Oh well, never was there ever a cat so good. Yeah, you know we all know these songs. And Grizabella comes out with Memory, Buster for Jones, Let, Rumble Teaser, and Mungo Jerry. You remember all these songs, and he has to pick one, and that's pretty much the show. The best I can gather from a plot point of view. But the movie is great. That 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 musical will stay with me forever. I have so much merchandise from that show. That movie is implanted in my head. I love that movie. Huge part of my childhood. Next one. Singing in the Rain. When I watch this movie, I immediately think of Florida. Let me explain. It was the summer of 2000, and I was seven at the time, and my parents had taken my... Well, my family and I went to Disney World for the first time, and it was awesome. Because it's Disney World, you know? And it was a really fun time. And I'll, I'll never forget this. My mom kept constantly telling me, you're going to love Disney World a lot more than Wonderland Pier. <laughs> I was seven. And boy, was she wrong. <laughs> that goes out to all my Wonderland people watching this. But anyway, um, yeah, so anyway, uh, so I, I, we, we were staying with my, my Aunt Margie at the time, at her place, because we didn't, we didn't get a hotel, because she lived in Florida anyway, so we were staying with her for the week, and she had a copy of Singing in the Rain, she had a copy of it, and she had it on video, and my dad was watching it, and I can't, I'll never forget this, I came downstairs one morning, and I looked at the TV, and the scene where Gene Kelly has that, um, he, it's already at the part where he's explaining the Broadway melody section of the movie, and it's hit, it's the dream sequence between him and I think I'm pronouncing this right, Sid Charisse. I could be pronouncing that wrong. But it's that dream sequence when she's wearing that long white gown and he's like just, you know, and he's dancing with her and everything and, and, and they're in that dream sequence. And I was watching that with my dad and I'm like, Dad, what is this movie? And he said, Singing in the Rain. And I watched it from that point until the end. And I liked what I saw. And I said, Dad, can we rewind that and watch it watch it again? And he said, yeah, sure. So I rewound it, and I watched it from the beginning, and I love that movie. And I'm going to tell you right now, anyone that is going into a visual medium, especially film, well, that's a, specifically a visual medium, should watch this movie. Because this movie is not only a musical, it's a movie about a time when the, when the film industry changed forever in the late 1920s, when we went from silent movies to talkies. So, it's it's very important that you watch this. This movie is a great family movie. This is a fun... It is hilarious in some of these scenes. Gene Kelly, and especially Donald O'Connor, makes me laugh every time. When he sings Make Him Laugh, I laugh so hard that at every time. The songs are memorable. You remember every one of these songs. D Debbie Reynolds, who I think is like maybe 20, 21 years old in this movie. I don't know. Um, ver very good movie. Ver ver it just brings me back to a lot of great childhood. It, it reminds me of that. It's got the sound of music quality to it, but in the 50s. And it's very, it's very well done. I, I, I think this is one of the, this is one of the, the most memorable movies that MGM ever put out, I think, especially in that time uh, with Gene Kelly. Gene Kelly did a great job with directing it. I keep forgetting he directed this movie, or he's one of the directors. Um, very well-made movie, f funny, very, very funny. 
Um, well acted, very good acting in this movie. It talks about a time period that changed the movie industry forever. And it's really interesting about them talking about it, because at the beginning they're like, talking pictures, that'll never amount to a thing. Like that, that I, I like how it ties into that, and it's really, and they, and they poke some fun at that, that they have some fun with that, with, with talking pictures and how that all started and everything. So, Singing in the Rain, if you guys haven't seen that movie, check that movie out. It's definitely worth the viewing. Next one.